Okay, this is it. This is the final topic. I don't know, is the screen shaking to you? Because it looks like... <laughs> all right, sorry, so it's just not me. All right, where we're all feeling. This is the final topic. And the thing about modulation is, I mean, it's one of these things that the whole, our whole modern um, world depends on. Because if we could only send data down one particular channel, um, you know, things would be quite limited. And so think about, you know, the air that surrounds us as one medium, right? Now you could have a copper wire of, and that's one physical channel, one fiber optic um, cable as one physical channel. But let's just think of the universe as one physical channel. That means that every electromagnetic signal you wouldn't be, if you couldn't modulate things um, or things weren't, we'd all have to take turns, right? So when we're at a meeting and everybody's being polite, we take turns and that's basically time division multiplexing. You know, I'll talk, then Steven, then Bella, then Devin, right? And then we come right back to the same order. Even if you have nothing to say, you take up, you know, some channel time, all right? And uh, time division multiplexing is used in fiber optic cables, but we also can use um, frequency division multi uh, multiplexing, all right? But all of this is predicated on the fact that we have some data that if we just tried to tr send it in raw form, like talking, right? If we just converted our voice to an electrical signal with the same, um, you know, period and, and amplitude and phase of our, our voice, right? We wouldn't be able to talk on that same copper channel at the same time, even though the signals would linearly combine, um, let's just to give a quick example. I mean, maybe you get all this, but right, if I average this. Right, or even, you know, once I've taken the average, I don't know what the original data is, right? Because more than one set of numbers could come up with the same thing. And let's just say this is one moment in time, that's the amplitude of one speaker, the amplitude of another, amplitude of another and an amplitude of another. We add these together and you lose all the individual information, right? It's gone. So if this, again, so if we had a copper wire or a fiber optic cable or anything, so imagine if um, there was only one available channel um, for the radio spectrum, right? That means it doesn't matter what, what hertz you're at, you can only have one at a time, right? So kind of the, the, the big takeaway is that if I take the Fourier transform of a cosine wave. Um, I'll call that omega one, right? What I get is two delta functions in the frequency regime 
and I get plus omega one minus omega one. Okay, and that's just the axis, right? So if I were um, transmitting pure sine waves, right? Let's say I have another sine wave pair. And another, right? Well, when we're talking, even though we're made up of sine waves, we don't really know which sine waves it is. But if I'm transmitting at this, uh, this frequency or this frequency or that frequency, well, you kind of know it, right? So even though all of these, these three frequencies could be transmitting down the same medium, right, whether it's a fiber optic cable, copper wire, or the air, right, if I want to recover one, all I got to do is make a bandpass filter around it, Oop. right, and then I can get that one back, right. If I want this, I just, I just filter everything but the signal that I want. So now you might say, all right, that's great. Um, your sine wave can be either on or off, right? So, you know, I have, a, I have my sine or my cosine wave and it, you know, two cycles and then it's off and then it's on for two cycles. Kind of like Morris code, like, you know, it's on or it's off, it's on or it's off, right? But um, in analog, we want to take the, our data, our voice data, or whatever we want to transmit, right? Okay. And we want to modify these sine waves somehow to make them transmit the data we want. Okay. So there's a few ways to do this, all right? One is amplitude modulation, the AM band and you have a sine wave and you're effectively modulating the amplitude of it, all right? Then there's a frequency modulation where you slightly change the frequency. You encode the data in a frequency signal, right? But the amplitude is constant. Then there's a phase change where everything's the same, but you're kind of delaying or accelerating the signal back and forth. All right, now when you do that, right, you take your data and you put it on one of these, what, what I would call a channel, right? And now I can have multiple channels, right, going down some medium. Now one issue, all right, the way I've drawn it is it's delta functions, but really, things, things aren't perfect sinusoids. They drift over time or they have uh, some noise in it. So I'm drawing a delta, I'm drawing a delta, I'm drawing a delta function, All right? But it's really kind of smeared out like that Gaussian type curve, right? So the thing is, is these channels will overlap, right, somewhat. And so you have to do this, you gotta keep them a certain amount of distance. Because if it was a pure delta function, right, I could keep them, I could put a lot of channels in there, right? So, um, so far we talked about bandwidth. I might not have really called it bandwidth, but a lot of times, some people call it, I have a low pass filter and the bandwidth is where I'm at minus three dB. Some people call that the bandwidth, right? Other things is, uh, would say is um, take a recording of my voice and um, saying something, right? And 
if I took the Fourier transform of, you know, me talking, right, I would have some spectrum, um, you know, maybe what, 40 hertz to, I don't know. Let's say two kilohertz, right? So what I'm saying in the in my voice, the bandwidth is here, and that there's just no information here and no information below a certain thing, and so that's the bandwidth, right? Sometimes the bandwidth is, you know, you have a bandpass filter. Okay, so. In communications, right, EE160, right, um, we define bandwidth as if you took the Fourier transform, uh, uh, the coefficients of, of a signal, right, what's the lowest frequency sinusoid, what's the highest frequency, right? And so um, in a telephone, we get 0.4 hertz to 3.4 kilohertz. So the effective um, bandwidth is really close to 3.4 kilohertz. Okay. So how do we modulate a signal? All right, well. God, I can't. There we go. So I can have a signal, right, XT, right, and, um, you know, that's me talking, right? So how can I get this to, how can I get this to um, on a carrier frequency? Well, you just multiply XT times cosine, and I'm just gonna say omega C for carrier T, all right? Now, When you do that, all right, you get, um, what happens is, is this is modulating this. It gives you a lot of other things, but if you were to do like an, an FFT of it, right, you'd get all this garbage and then right here at omega C, you'd get this strong signal. Now, yeah, over time, this amplitude is going up and down and things like that, because um, you're modulating it, but that's how you get it, right? All you gotta do is multiply. Now, the book shows you how to use, uh, make multiplier out of op amps, um, but the thing is, is, I just mention it, because you can get a multiplier, 250 megahertz bandwidth, right? So that's more like your gain bandwidth, right, of an op amp. And, uh, you know, buying them one. plus uh, something to take the square this price to be just that as high as they can, but still be cheaper than to do it yourself. So really just, all right, because here's the thing, what's the FM 88 to 108 megahertz. That's so you gotta be multiplying that fast, right? Uh, even the LT 1252, two bucks each. Um, so that's six, but I have to assemble it. Maintain support it's something that can go wrong 
um, you know, designing it. So that $11, even though on a parts basis, right? Um, no, it, yeah, it, the multiplier. Now there are, um, you don't always need a full multiplier. You just need to kind of do something um, close to multiplication. So in fact, there is a um, kind of a way around that multiplier is that if we just pass a signal through this switcher, right? And the frequencies of the carrier frequency. So, um, I don't know, NPR is 88.5 megahertz. All right, so that's. That's what I would have here, um, which gives you, you know, what is the, the Fourier coefficients of a square wave, right? Is you have one over two, then you have all these other, um, you have the fundamental frequency, then you start getting the other frequencies, right? So when I multiply all this together, right, this is my signal times the modulated signal, I get this, right? And then yeah, you don't want this DC component that pops up. Not these higher harmonics. So you just do a bandpass filter. And so you're left with your uh, cosine. All right. So how does that work? Well, here's a one kilohertz sine wave. And I'm going to modulate a one megahertz carrier wave. So this is just a sine wave times a sine wave. It, um, to try to do some music can, in LT Spice, it's a little long to simulate. But I have two clocks, right? So when the switch is closed, when this switch is closed, this data comes here. And when this switch is closed, it sets it to zero, all right? And the file, you can find it on, online. So really, but the switches are never open at the same time. So it's on. Switch one is on, then they're both off. Switch two is on. So your, if this is my input sine wave, right? And then I'm passing it through this switcher, right? It almost, like, why did this turn blue? Well, we have to zoom in. And so what's going on is the green is the original sine wave, the blue, is when it's zero, the output goes to zero. Then when the switch is on, it passes the sine wave. Then the switch, the switch is exchanged position and it goes back to zero. So it's just going off and on, off and on, but it goes right up to whatever the sine wave happened to be. So this really a non-overlapping clock, right? Which is pretty easy to create digitally and some switches, which, okay, there's noise and hysteresis, but really um, not that hard to make, right? Maybe a little bit noisy, but that's okay. So then I took the Fourier transform of that. Now to really see it, I had to take it off of the logarithmic scale. So VN, right, there's one, fundamental frequency of one kilohertz. Why isn't it one of those, um, if you recall, remember we would do the fast Fourier transform and we would get these perfect spectra with one dot on top of it. But that's when this was sampled perfectly and this is a numerical simulation. So there's, a, there's like a noise in it just due to the fact of how it's how the calculations so it spreads but you can see yeah it's centered at one kilohertz that's the input but now the output 
yeah, that one kilohertz is still there, but now we're also getting the one megahertz. And the thing is, is this one megahertz is actually carrying part of that sine wave here. It's being modulated, all right? But notice we get all these other things we don't want. So in order to get this signal, yeah, we want to have a band pass, and then we really will have xt times um, our cosine. All right. So I just made up some Butterworth, right? LT Spice gave me these constant, uh, not LT Spice, Python. You know, these are our A4, A3, A2, A1, A0, right? And it's got B2, B1, and B0. Now something, this is really a bandpass filter and it's stable, but notice A3 is negative and A1 is negative. I'm not quite sure how that squares with Descartes' rule for stability, but um, or actually, no, B1 and B0. Yeah, B2 is constant. So there's only one coming out. It's coming out of the band passport. All right. So this was the modulated signal, right? That's after the band pass. Then I'm going to show you, then I recovered it. I have to kind of come back here. So I just typed it into LT Spice. Here is that Laplace uh, transform of the bandwidth bandpass filter. So that's my modulated. That's what I'm transmitting, right? Then once I receive it, yeah, I kind of just did a, I did a quick filter um, to get it back out. So that V recovered looks very similar to my input. And yeah, I take the um, Fourier, Fourier spectrum of it uh, and you can see, all right. Now there's some scaling that goes in there. Now, when you're reading like the book, remember when you take the Fourier coefficients or the Fourier transform, it has the negative frequency and the positive frequency, right? And even, you know, the Laplace transform has it too, right? If I have a sine wave or a cosine wave, or I, I mean, I can have a system with two poles right here, right? And it actually behaves very much like a delta function if I were to go across that axis, all right? Now, in, the, in the communi this communications block, he's using F instead of omega, right? Because that's just how you do it. So when you say you're gonna do a band pass filter, just like I talked about, right? You actually kind of, cut out the middle part, right? So that you keep this, you keep this. And something just to keep in mind is that when you multiply something by cosine omega t and you get your minus and your plus omegas, right? By multiplying by a sinusoid, they're calling it, you see one side band and two side bands. So it's always called double side band. And it just comes from that, uh, the Fourier transform. Okay. So I have a signal, right? Some amplitude times cosine times some FC for a carrier frequency, all right? Take the Fourier transform, now it's a, in frequency. A lot of times they always use the omega. Notice you have a delta function, frequency minus FC, frequency plus FC. So if you, re, you know, what if this was delta T minus 
T1, and this was T plus T1, right? The minus T1 pushed it towards the right, and the plus T1 would have put it on, pushed it to the left. And so it's the same thing. Right? Except instead of time, it's the frequency axis, right? So you just, this only is infinity when F equals FC. This is only infinity when F, um, when this equals FC or when this equals minus FC, right? Or oops, over here. All right, so now, right, multiplication stays multiplication, right? So I t multiply this, and now I have this transform here, okay? So the X is this times that, all right, that's all. And that's where the double sideband comes from. Now, here's the thing. Why not the Laplace transform? This is a quick review. The Laplace transform really assumes that you were zero and then were a sine wave. Okay. The the Fourier assumes you were, you've been a sine wave forever and you will be forever, all right? Now it's true, when you take a transfer function and set S equal to J omega, what you are doing in fact is putting it into the Fourier part. Like that J omega existed forever, all right? But this is our double sideband. Now, so this is interesting. So now we've got a signal. And yeah, in time, this would be being modulated. The amplitude would be going up and down, right? Or if it was frequency, if I was modulating FM, this would be wiggling back and forth, depending on the data. Or if it was phase, well, then the phase would be being changed over time, right? This is just one snapshot in time. Okay. So how did we get our double modulation? Multiplied it by a cosine. So now we multiply something by a cosine and now we have two bands on this negative and positive frequency. How do we, what's another way to recover the signal than the kind of quick and dirty way I showed you to recover it? Multiply it again by cosine. Yeah. So now you get XT times cosine here. Well now break this out, you get xt times a constant, and then xt times twice the frequency. That. That's worthy. I don't know, do any of you guys watch Crash Course? It's time for a thought bubble, except I don't have a thought bubble. So let's just have, you know, a quick re review. All right. So if I have a sine wave, or a cosine wave, right?
Now, um, now remember, so on the, you know, I said uh, match sine two pi one kilohertz T to the FFT, right? And then really we, you would see a plot like this and this would be one kilohertz and this would be frequency, right? And this would be amplitude was one, so it should be one. You'd see that, you'd mark it off and get it correct, right? And same with the cosine. Now the thing is, is why are we talking about two sidebands now when we were only doing this? Well, the Fourier uh, transform, that's just, the fast Fourier transform, that's just how it calculates it. It doesn't do both, all right? So now, cosine two pi F T times cosine two pi F T, right? Well, Notice when this is one and this is one, you get one. When they're both minus one, you get one. And so you get a new signal at um, half the period or twice the frequency, right? But also you get a DC offset, right? So just go back to your, you had a sine wave, right? You passed it You passed it through a, uh, a diode, and so you're getting half the sine wave. Then put it through a full right wave rectifier, right? And what that did is kind of give you like an absolute value to it, right? But it moves it off, right? Off the zero. That DC component, right, is being multiplied by your XT. So all we gotta do, so that DC part, now all we gotta do is filter that is what I'm trying to say, all right? So all we gotta do is multiply it by the same sinusoid, right? It's gotta be exactly the same. We get that DC offset and then we get that twice the frequency. Well, we just do a low pass filter, boop, keeping that and getting rid of that and then we can recover the signal, all right? So here's, maybe how it would work, maybe with a better picture. So this XT, right, that's like me talking in time, all right? Now, if I take the um, Fourier transform of that, I'm getting minus B to B. And this shape is him just kind of randomly making up something that's symmetric, right? This signal doesn't translate to, to that. It's just, you know some real thing. Okay, now what does this look like in time? XT is the original signal, right? Uh, yeah, okay. Then we multiply it by cosine of our carrier frequency, and now it's just bouncing up and down, right? And that, see now we no longer have these delta functions of a pure sinusoid, it's, you know, spread out. 
But yeah, the shape here is moved to the left and to the right, double sideband, which you can do with the multiplier or that switcher that I, I showed you. All right, now, how do we recover it? So on the previous slide, we had this, right? And this, all right, why didn't I need a band pass? Because I multiplied it by a, a pure cosine, all right? Now, I put it through a demodulator. So I'm multiplying the cosines again, all right? You get that kind of absolute value part to it with the DC offset, and now look, there's something centered, right? But these green dots is like it's going through the air, it's going through the fiber optic cable, it's going through the copper wire. Now I want to tune my channel. So, I, so there's one carrier frequency, I tune this, and yeah, you kind of got to get it exactly to be whatever that is, right? And now you just apply your low pass filter and you're done, right? And the thing is, is you can change this, right? And still, you don't really have to change the low pass filter. Um, so I talked about frequency. So time division multiplexing. We're taking turns. Notice this is time and we're swapping, you know, we're um, taking turns. Now the thing about time division multiplexing is a lot of times you need to have some kind of address header in there to know where, where the data is going, right? So over here, it might look almost the same, but notice the axis is frequency and yeah, you can't have these brick wall filters. They're unrealizable, right? And you have a separation between them, right? But I have, you know, three different people who want to talk, right? I have three different frequencies or N frequencies. The frequencies are separated by a certain amount, right? Now, how are these summed? Well, just an antenna, right? Antennas broadcast stuff into the air. That, that's all you need to do, right? Um, then you receive it and you can then apply um, your BAM bass filter to get rid of what you don't want or get close. Then multiply it by your original frequency and they're not showing the low pass filter and you recover your whatever. Okay, so the higher the frequency, the tighter you can pack them in too. All right. The double sideband has some issues, all right, and one of those issues is you've got to have a perfect replica of the sine wave that you used to encode the data to begin with, all right? With the AM modulation, what you do is you still multiply your original signal times a cosine, but you add this offset, okay? So, Here, this would be the original way. You just multiply your data, which happened to be a sine wave, um, times the carrier frequency. And you get this, you do the spectrum and you, you get that. With, by adding that, you get a different shape and you get signals that are easier to grab, all right? So in fact, 
the reason why AM is so popular is that all you need is a diode and a resistor and a capacitor. So, and this is called envelope detection. So you see how the sine wave reaches a max, right? Wherever the original data was, right? This was the original data. Then I'm multiplying it by this sine wave and it's hitting it, right? But it's hitting it high and it's hitting it low when it goes positive and negative. In this case, now, even though this picture is not quite showing it very well. Well, actually the, this whole thing has to be, can't go below zero. What you can see here is that, you see how that original sine wave is there? If I just trace out the peaks of the cosine wave. Well, you just pass, you're just like rectifying it, just like, you know, a 97 with your power supply, right? And you just see these little drops because possibly the, uh, you know, for the time constant, right? So if you put it all together, you have an antenna, right? It has a carrier frequency, right? You've got to adjust to that carrier frequency. And yeah, you got to have an amplifier. The mixer is really, you're multiplying it by the original cosine. Then you filter, then demodulate it. So that's like, um, now that's kind of a lot to remember, right? But really, Double sine band, right? XT times cosine omega carrier T, right? Gives me this, right? Or I'm going to redraw that. Cosine omega one T, okay. All right. X T, right, equals, you know, some signal, right? which then, you know, you kind of get to that, right? Multiply it together. And you get This gets shifted here, that gets shifted there. So it's no longer around zero, right? If it 
if the square wave is used as multiplier feed through band pass, right? That's how we encode, right? Decode. Right, take your Y modulated times the original cosine, which now let's say that's at a half, that's at a half. You get the same. Um, Now this is minus two omega one, and this is a quarter. You have the original signal back centered around zero. Right, plus two omega one. And you do a low pass. Okay. So that's the simplest way to do it, but the hard engineering part. Um, Simple to understand, right? But needs it needs the exact cosine, right? It's got to be perfect in phase with whatever. So whatever the phase was that generated it, it's got to have it. Right, it's got to have the exact same frequency. So the engineering problem is to try to get these oscillators that are perfectly matched. And then, yeah, I guess you tune the phase and then when it sounds good, you know it's working, right? Envelope, you still have XT, right? Right, but you just add some DC offset so that it's not negative. Okay. Because think about it, if I had a sine wave like this, right, and I put it through a half wave rectifier, right, wouldn't I get just some kind of DC signal? Right, if that was perfectly symmetric, right, I would just, this would just rectify it to some DC signal. But if I've offset it, right, well, I'm gonna change that. The difference in the power supply 
you make this time constant really big so it holds the charge. But for an envelope detector, it's kind of got to be small. So it kind of you just get this back out, <laughs> right? Because this has to be faster than a normal power supply. But with this, right, because there's a DC offset, you actually are getting that original signal out, all right? So I think um, sometimes they'll ask you to how to ex explain how a radio works on a job interview. And really, you know, yeah, you know, multiply by a cosine, right? Okay, transmit it, right? Maybe you filter it or something, right? Then, um, like I said, the simplest way is then to demodulate it, multiply it by the same cosine, which then, this puts on the carrier not centered at zero hertz, right? This centers it back at zero hertz plus, I'm gonna say N times two times omega one harmonics low pass it out, right? So, you know, even, you know, in this, we have our pulse width modulated signal here, right? We put it into a low pass filter, right? And yeah, we get DC with a little bit of ripple. But as this changes in time, right, this DC value changes and we use, so by, we're encoding the information and how long this is on, but that square wave, right, puts a harmonic right there at your carry, at the same carrier frequency, right? And we have our DC part, right? Because it's zero to something. The low pass filter captures that DC part gets rid of the harmonic, right? So, it's the same thing, but instead, we have something and by we multiplying it, we get back our DC but then we're still filtering out some harmonic with a low pass filter. So maybe if you can keep those two things together, right? It's not like, oh, there's this project and then there's modulation and they're not, no, it's actually, we're using the same thing, all right? But here's, these are all, These are all analog techniques, right? Now, we all use digital, right? So really, this communications business now in the modern day, it's EE-112. Um, so as quick advising, you know, 160 ah, versus 132. Well, you know, if you really liked 112, then yeah, maybe 160 is for you, right? And if you really liked 110, which has, you know, one day of communication theory, right? Um, but 
but a whole lot of stability, right? Then maybe 132 is for you, all right? You can take both and count one as a tech elective. It, it's up to you, all right? But, um, but just, you know, we use the Fourier spectrum on a uh, square wave to do a filter to do pulse width modulation. So that's more like analog circuits and things like that. But we were still using Fourier spectra, spectra right? Then we use Fourier spectra to talk about communications. So the thing is, is 160 and 132, they kind of use the same math, the same concepts, but this is, you know, um, I have a data channel with a carrier frequency and a modulation scheme. How much data can I send reliably, right? 132, I have um, a complex control system with more than one input, right? We've only talked about a tire going over a, um, a curb or the pendulum being out of control, right? But an airplane has multiple inputs, right? So um, 132 should also do multiple inputs. Um, now you wanna talk about it in office hours, that's great too, but I just thought uh, to give you that. So, um, One more day, okay? So it's gonna be a review session, but it's gonna be driven by you, okay? No quiz, all right? Um, So this particular document has the learning objectives for 110, right, in as much detail as possible. Um, but on the other hand, it was, it was written in a bit of a rush. No longer, you don't need DF2 anymore, all right? But you come through and I'm telling you what are the big picture and then by each homework, what are the skills that you need to do, right? I might have mentioned this on the first day, right? What is each homework? What is going to be on each midterm? What's going to be on the final, right? I even have a video. I do, I think, a little bit more than just read the slides. But um, I really, really try to not make anything a secret. Right? So here's the equation sheet. Yep, there's, there's prior exams that you, you can have access to. Um, I'm not quite sure where that video went. I don't, I don't see the link to the video, but it's, it's in my channel. Maybe that's why a lot of people didn't watch it. Okay. So you, you, know, you can see what to expect. Right, but I, I, I see you, Stephen. Um, now, yeah, um, is it gonna be a band pass, a low pass, a notch? 
you know, uh, you know, which DF2 or, you know, making up different uh, Fourier spectra or which um, kind of signal are you going to see. But there was also these notes, I think I put it together for one, midterm one, putting it all together, right? Anyway, tying it all together, right? This case study kind of shows you how it all goes together. And yeah, maybe at the time you felt like we're jamming it down your throat pretty quickly, but really um, those notes and that video, pretty much what we do, at least for the first module. The second module is, all right, now we had a filter we wanted. All right, how do we make it with op amps? All right, and then stability and some other things. And then the last part is really, okay, um, here's a Bode plot. What system do we have, right? Here, looking at the transient, what do we have? All right. Um, Stephen? No, one. DF2 has parallel built into it. So, all right, here's my op amps, right? Now the thing is, is yeah, these feedback nodes right, they're coming back that way. But when I have a summer here, right, and I'm pulling this here, this here, you know, these output nodes there, hey, that's in parallel, right? Rather than, you know, H1, H2, then sum them. Yeah, there, there's an H here. There's an H here and an H here and an H here. It's just they kind of depend on each other, but those H's are summed in parallel for the B constants. Now, yeah, when there's only one, you don't need that summer, but it's there, okay? So you need to know that, but yeah, a if you look, you'll see this kind of question on every exam, I think. Okay. But then there's, you know, things like, you know, and what are you, what is it, a low pass filter look like intuitively, right? I, but anyway, that's it for today. That was a great review question, right? So bring your review questions. Um, yeah, and we'll, that'll be the last, um, what do you call it? Zoom meeting, right? The exam will be face-to-face -face in this classroom.